皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So, guys, today I'm actually in Fukuoka right now. I'm in my,、uh, my parents in law's house. So,、uh, the end of October, we actually wanted to go home to Fukuoka a little bit. You know, it's Harumi, my wife's home city, Fukuoka. Um, because Harumi is going to be giving birth to our third baby, Zen, very soon. And once he is born,、um, we will not be able to come over to Fukuoka that often. By the way, just in case if you don't know, Fukuoka is a prefecture on the southern parts of Japan. So from Kyoto, which is like right in the, the middle of the center of Japan as an island, I mean, right in the middle of it,、um, it takes about three hours on bullet train to get over here. So if you have like a really, really small baby, three hours Shinkansen bullet train ride is pretty hard. And of course, both for the Mother and also for the babies. So we thought this will probably be one of our last chances to come over here in a while, you know. So yeah, it was great timing.、Um, Harumi and I was actually able to go on a date, <laughs> just the two of us. So that our two daughters that we have right now,、um, our、uh, my mother in law, that would be、uh, their grandpa- grandmother, and also their aunt, has actually、uh, been ta- taking a look at them while we went for a date. And it was really, really fun.、Um, the channel members will be able to take a look at how the date went and everything. But, anyways,、uh, today, Um, very, very short story, but it's something really important that I noticed and I wanted to share with you guys.、Um, it's the, the today's main topic to make a long story short、uh, conclusions first. Basically, when I'm here in Fukuoka, this time especially, I really felt that the people in Fukuoka and people in Kyoto are very, very different. So, whenever I've been asked questions about like where should I study, where should I live in Japan, I've always said Kyoto is probably the best. I mean, it is true. It is true that there is a lot of places that you get to train or study traditional culture, or there's a lot of things if you like history, if you like religions, you know, Japanese culture and such. There is absolutely the most amount of places that you can go and see and enjoy these things. You know, of course, each region, each、uh, prefecture does have their、uh, strengths, you know, their features and such. But Kyoto is just, like absolutely、um, the best, obviously, because it was the capital of Japan for more than 1,000 years where the emperor lived, right? So I always said that. But coming over here to Fukuoka and actually meeting the people here, like、um, just, just anyone could be a,、um, a staff at a ramen shop or、um, a restaurant staff or people just, you know, on the train or something. The people in Fukuoka are just so much kinder, I really felt. The, when we went to, when Harumi and I went to the date to go to a restaurant to have dinner together,、um, we were riding a train, a、uh, subway, and it was actually pretty packed. But I was super, super surprised to see that the priority seats were actually opened. And that never happens in Kyoto. <laughs> I mean, I've been living in Kyoto for around 10 years now, right? The priority seats, no matter you know, how many old people are standing next to them or how many pregnant mothers there are,、um, the, for example,、uh, the men or you know, young teenagers will never. Ever, you know, give their seats to those kind of people who are actually in the need of those priority seats. They will be happy to act as if they're sleeping. I'm like, why are you sitting there in the first place? I'm the kind of person who really can't understand why you would have the, I don't know, the mentality, I guess you would say, to be sitting. On a seat while you have a pregnant mother standing in front of you. I, I've made videos about this before.、Um, who, what kind of Japanese people per, you know, makes me the angriest, I guess, but this is it, right? You know, the people who never lent their seats to、um, the people in need at priority seats. But, anyways, it was actually opened in Fukuoka. I was like, wow, this is amazing, you know. And I just, I don't know, just the way people smile. I guess in Fukuoka is just much, much more natural.、Um, you're not like forced to do it.、Um, like, it's not just like one or two places I'm talking about. Literally everywhere I go. And during this week in Fukuoka, because my, you know, my father in law, my mother in law wants, wants me to be, enjoy the best in Fukuoka, they've been taking me to a lot of other places too. But everywhere, every time I meet someone, I hardly meet someone that looks grumpy or frustrated or angry. They're all generally looking happy. Happy, you know? And in Kyoto, as I explained before many times in my videos and all that kind of stuff, Kyoto, because it was the capital of Japan for 1,000 years where the emperor lived, there are so many rules, you know, 
There's just so many rules and culture or the ways that things are supposed to be, you know. At this season, you need to do this kind of greeting. At this, at this timing, at this occasion, you need to get the give this, these kind of gifts at these kind of wrappings, you know. There's so many rules. And it's understandable because it was the city of the aristocracy, you know. It's understandable, but I really feel living in Kyoto, even today, of course, these kind of traditions, this atmosphere is still carried on to Japan. And... You know, seeing it, I really feel that people do act politely. That's the thing. In Kyoto, people do act politely, but deep down, when you look at their eyes, they're not smiling, if that makes sense. Now, I hope that makes sense. When you, when you look into their eyes, you can see they're not smiling or acting happy from their hearts. They're doing it because it's, that's the rule. That's how it's supposed to be. Now, of course, obviously. I want to make it very clear to you guys. Obviously, it's impossible to say that everyone in Kyoto is like this or everyone in Fukuoka are like this. But at least what I can say is from my personal experience, right? So I just wanted to share with you that even in Japan, I mean, like I can imagine like for a different country. For me, it might be, let's say, all of the different districts or prefectures in a country in Southeast Asia or maybe in Europe. Like, for example, if it was Germany, I've been to a couple of um, cities before like you know Hanover, uh, Frankfurt and um, all that other places right but I, I, it's impossible for me to try to understand how the people living in Hanover and, and um, other cities are different for example I stayed in Hanover the longest when I was in high school in Germany but anyways but I, I would say this is something that only a local who lives in that country will notice. So I just really wanted to share this with you. I really feel if you're interested in coming to Japan, of course, Kyoto, um, studying the culture, the history is great. And of course, if you live on your own and if you have a job, you basically wouldn't you know, have to talk with so many locals in the first place. If you could just ignore that, it's not a big deal. But I really feel that if I did it, if I wasn't training in uh, traditional culture, and if I wasn't training with my senseis that I train with right now, I really seriously would have considered living in Fukuoka. I really thought. I just wanted uh, more people to know that there's an option down south in Japan too. I mean, for me, the bigger cities like Tokyo is a little bit too crowded. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of people who love that too, like my sister, who's a singer, a professional singer in Tokyo. But uh, that's a little bit too much for me. And also Hiroshima, where I grew up. Hiroshima, although it's like mm, rather big, you know, in terms of how big the city is, it's rather big, but not so big in between there. You know, not completely countryside, but not so, you know, of an urban area kind of thing, you know. It's like right in the middle of it. But um, I really feel that Hiroshima doesn't have such a bright, warm atmosphere like Fukuoka does either. I don't know where it comes from, but... Yeah, Hiroshima doesn't have that either, personally, I feel. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that I would love to live in Fukuoka if I was living a different life. Um, it's, the cities are big. There's a lot of job opportunities. There's tons of great schools. The people are great. The food. Oh, my gosh. The food is amazing here. Oh, my gosh. I love the food so much because, it's you know, it's close to the oceans. They have great seafood. They have great ramen. They have the uh, Hakata ramen. Hakata is the cat on... Um, the, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot the word, not the capital, capital of a prefecture. You don't say capital of a prefecture, do you? You know, it's like the, uh, the main city, you know, in that prefecture. Please let me know in the comments, guys. Yeah, um, this is Hakata Ramen, so that's the ramen specifically of that city. And so on and so forth, you know, the uh, hot pot called Motsunabe, which is the hormones, actually, hormones hot pot. I ate with Harumi in the dinner night, uh, date night last night it was great as well. Oh, super delicious. That is amazing. It's like, you know, miracle how delicious things are here. So I just want to tell you, Fukuoka is great. And if you have a chance to come to Japan, even if you're just traveling, um, I really hope you can try out Fukuoka and kind of see how different the atmosphere is and such. It just seems so... The air is just so much lighter. You know, the people are brighter. The air is lighter. It just seems a little bit more happier, I guess, down here. I have no clue why, but I just wanted to tell you more about it. Thank you so much for listening, guys. So everyone, as I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. 
So I know there's a lot of people studying Japanese willing to come to Japan to study, travel, or work, or even train our traditional culture and such. However, I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we're facing a lot of social problems, we're losing our traditional culture, and the younger generations who are supposed to be carrying on the good things about Japan are dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life trying to make Japan a better place. I want to try to solve the social problems, preserve and evolve traditional culture, and also help out the younger generations so they can have a brighter future. And to do this, the nearest goal I have right now is to raise money to buy my very first bamboo shakuhachi so I can do more collaboration videos with Kamiya Daisuke-san and also spread the wonderful culture and world of traditional music. And also, I am selling the merchandise on my Suzuki page, which will be only sold to the end of this year. Limited edition merchandise sold to only to the end of this year. So I hope you can check these out for me. All right, guys, thank you so much. And please let me know about the word I was looking for. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll be waiting for your comments, guys. Bye-bye.